My name is Alicia Brooks, and I am the Chief of Staff to DeKalb County District 4 Commissioner Steve Bradshaw. Thank you for joining us this evening. We put together a program, an evening of healing and inspiration. We hope that you will enjoy it, and at the end of the program, you will have been uplifted and inspired. Tonight, our Mistress of Ceremony is Lori Wilson. I'm sure you know her, WSB TV, Channel 2, reporter and anchor. Lori? Good evening, and thanks so much for tuning in to DCTV Channel 23 for this evening of healing and inspiration. The brainchild of DeKalb County Board of Commissioners presiding officer and District 4 Commissioner Steve Bradshaw. This evening is meant to allow us all to come together for a time to <sighs> exhale, to reflect, and to feel hope for all of DeKalb County. You know, it's been a trying year during which our health, finances, and everyday way of life have been challenged in ways we never could have imagined. The loss of life, loss of employment, the very conveniences we took for granted a year ago have really pushed us all to the limit. But through it all, DeKalb County wants to remind you, you don't have to suffer alone. You're not alone. Throughout our program this evening, you're going to be provided with several resources available right now where you and your loved ones can go and get help if you need it. This is an evening of hope and words of encouragement for all of us to enjoy. So who better to lean toward for words of wisdom and hope than those who have brought words of inspiration throughout the year to DeKalb County? It's why Commissioner Bradshaw has welcomed the community leaders who brought words of inspiration during the regularly convened Board of Commissioners meetings throughout the year to join us again this evening to continue their message of faith and of hope. We also have wonderful performances for you which promise to uplift us all during this time in which we're getting used to our new normal in the wake of the pandemic. Sure, coronavirus has changed everyday life as we know it, but one thing's for sure, DeKalb County remains strong. So let's get the program started with the person who brought us together for this most auspicious occasion, District 4 Commissioner Steve Bradshaw. He'll be followed by DeKalb County Chief Executive Officer Michael Thurmond. But first, please allow me a few moments to tell you about the commissioner who brought us together today. As the presiding officer of the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners, Commissioner Bradshaw dealt with a unique set of challenges in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Certainly as a commissioner, his priority was making sure the health and wellness of residents and employees alike, well, that it was okay. But as shelter in place orders extended and it became apparent this new normal would last longer than first anticipated, it also became apparent the business of the county had to be handled. A true community servant, Commissioner Bradshaw has served the county as a commissioner and this country as a military veteran. There's no question, he's worked hard to ensure the commission meetings are now regularly broadcast in the virtual realm. And I assure you, he leads the meetings with true military precision. His heart for service and the people of this county is why we have this wonderful program today. Now it's my distinct pleasure to welcome Commissioner Steve Bradshaw to bring you greetings. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for joining us for this evening of healing and inspiration. Before I go any further, I would like to thank Lori Wilson from WSB TV for that kind introduction and for taking the time to serve as our mistress of ceremonies for our event this evening. I know that with your busy schedule, there are plenty of other places that you could be, but you have made the choice to be a major part of our event today and I'm personally grateful beyond words. Here in DeKalb County, we have a tradition of having a guest offer words of inspiration before we start our business meetings. This tradition precedes my tenure as presiding officer of the board, and it has been something that I've been pleased and honored to continue. Needless to say, 2020 has been a very challenging year dare I say, unprecedented in modern history. The COVID-19 virus has induced a global pandemic, which has precipitated a massive healthcare crisis. My heart goes out to all of those who have lost loved ones as a result. Likewise, my heart goes out to all of the healthcare workers and other essential workers who are soldiering on amid this crisis. This pandemic has also induced an economic crisis, which has resulted in millions of our fellow citizens losing their jobs and thousands of businesses going under. And as I stand before you this evening, many of our fellow citizens are food insecure and housing insecure as a result. 
not to mention the fact that we have been through and continue to go through a bruising election season with many local, state, and federal races on the ballot, up to and including the race for President of the United States. And in this time of upheaval and discontent, our bi-weekly inspirational messages have taken on a special significance this year. And as we approach the holiday season, it occurred to me that our collective discontentment might be exacerbated. Therefore, several weeks ago, I thought that it might be a good thing if we extended an invitation to all of this year's inspirational speakers to return for one evening to share and speak to us. Hence, an evening of healing and inspiration. I want to thank all the speakers who are here with us this evening for sharing their words. I am personally grateful beyond words. I also want to thank the musicians who have agreed to share their time and considerable talent with us this evening. Additionally, I want to thank our DC TV director, Diamond Lewis, and her entire team for supporting us in this effort. I never cease to be amazed by their dedication and professionalism. Likewise, I would like to thank our IT director, John Matelski, and his entire team for their steadfast support throughout this entire crisis. I really appreciate your efforts. And of course, I want to thank my office team, which is led by my highly capable chief of staff, Alicia Brooks, and supported by our constituent coordinator, Robin Fleeg. As I have said on many occasions, it will be impossible for me to discharge the duties of my office without their loyalty and support. And Alicia has done an amazing job in pulling this program together. A little more than 57 years ago, President John F. Kennedy gave a speech at American University in which he spoke of peace. Peace. That day, June 10, 1963, was about eight months after the Cuban Missile Crisis and about two months after I was born. And as we are met here this evening, I believe that this nation is yearning for a sense of peace. Therefore, President Kennedy's words strike me as very relevant as he speaks to us across the decades, in which he said, what kind of a peace do we seek? I am talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on earth worth living. Not just peace in our time, but peace for all time. Our problems are man-made, therefore they can be solved by man. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's futures. And we are all mortal. In ways far more eloquent than I can hope to muster, I think what President Kennedy was trying to tell us is that we are all in this together that our fates, fortunes, and futures are tied together. As a people, we will emerge from this pandemic and its devastating effects. And this county, this state, and this nation will be stronger on the other side because we got through it together. Now I hope you all sit back, relax, and enjoy the program that has been put together for you. And I hope that you receive it in the spirit that it is offered. And may we all find some measure of healing, inspiration, and peace. Thank you all so much. And now, it is my great pleasure to introduce the man who became CEO of DeKalb County at a very critical time in this county's history and has led this county back from the edge of a cliff. We took our respective seats as part of this governing authority on the same day, January 1st, 2017. 
And since that day, I have borne witness to the way he has led us with integrity, determination, and grace. I'm proud to call him my colleague. More importantly, I'm proud to call him my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Chief Executive Officer of DeKalb County, Michael Thurman. Welcome to an evening of healing and inspiration uh, that has been led by and formulated by and envisioned by our presiding officer, Commissioner Steve Bradshaw. Uh, I am so excited and thrilled to be a part of this wonderful event because tonight, in the midst of challenges, both economic and health related, Commissioner Bradshaw and his staff thought it not robbery to take some time to express our appreciation and our thanksgiving uh, to all that we hold dear, to express our love and appreciation for each other, and to thank the good Lord above for providing us with the strength and determination we need in order to face and overcome the challenges that are present in our lives today. I wanna to thank our faith leaders who throughout the past year have provided us with inspiration, uh, with encouragement, and more importantly, with knowledge as to how we can continue to do our jobs as public servants and not to grow weary in our good doings. I'm proud to have stood shoulder to shoulder with presiding officer Bradshaw and our county commissioners, collectively as the DeKalb Governing Authority, as well as our 6,000 employees. We stood shoulder to shoulder to stand in the gap and provide those critical services needed by our citizens and residents. It's a challenge, but we are here to meet the challenge. We're proud and aren't really honored to have been given the opportunity to serve the citizens who need it the most. I'm proud to stand with those on Saturday mornings as we provided fresh fruits and vegetables and protein to more than 20,000 DeKalb County families during this pandemic. I'm proud to work with our commissioners to provide $15 million in funding to support our small businesses as they struggle uh, with uh, a customer base that's been impacted by COVID-19. I'm proud to stand with law enforcement and fire and police. I'm proud to stand with sanitation and watershed and all our many agencies in IT and human resources as we do continue to do the work that is necessary to keep our government moving forward. So once again, Thank you so much, Commissioner Bradshaw, for giving me this opportunity to stop by just briefly. Thank you for your vision and determination and leadership, friendship and support. Thank you to those faith leaders who are also involved in this very, very wonderful evening of healing and inspiration. And most importantly, thank you to the 750,000 residents who live, work and play here in DeKalb County. Thank you for having honored me of giving me this opportunity to serve. And thank you most of all for allowing me, like you, to be able to say, to be proud of the fact that I am a citizen of DeKalb County, Georgia. Thank you, God bless, and be safe. As you just heard, DeKalb County has actively worked to ensure that most critical needs of residents are addressed even during the height of the pandemic. In fact, during trying times, this county came together like never before. Here now is a special video presentation produced by DCTV Channel 23 as we look at the strength, unity, and resilience that arose through DeKalb's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. As we all prepare to live under the guise of our new normal, some of life's most basic essentials of the days of old still persist. As attempts to slow the spread of COVID-19 have resulted in the mandate of social distancing, DeKalb County government has employed a new strategy to ensure that life is sustained and protected. 
that strategy, socially distant service delivery. We want you to know that we are prepared, we are focused, and we will do whatever is necessary to continue to protect the health and safety of our citizens. DeKalb County officials monitor the pandemic and strategize for the most effective and efficient way to continue to serve, including readying additional first responders to be deployed if needed and employing a virtual triage method in the county's 911 center. When you call in, we're asking a series of questions and we're trying to determine whether or not you're showing the symptoms. And again, if you are symptomatic, that allows us to let police, fire, and EMS take the proper measures before they ever get on scene. Strategically armed with more information on what to expect, our first responders are even better prepared to continue to serve and protect. We're still running approximately 350 calls a day. Um, Those calls are related not only to fire, but our EMS calls. And some of those calls may require our folks to take the extra precautions uh, as it relates to COVID-19. We're making sure that the officers have masks in their vehicles. That way they can provide it if they encounter anyone that may be showing symptoms and also they can have it in case for whatever reason they may need to use it if they're in an environment where they're highly exposed. And while human to human contact may be lessened, the flow of DeKalb's critical services, so vital to everyday life, have not been affected. If your garbage is picked up on Monday, we will be there on Monday. Tuesday, we're going to be there on Tuesday. Wednesday, we're going to be there on Wednesday. So residents should continue to expect the same level of service that we have given prior to COVID-19 virus. It's business as usual for the county water system as well as the sewer system. There's absolutely no impact to any of our core businesses, producing safe drinking water, transmitting it to all of our customers safely, collecting used water and treating it and discharging back to the environment. There's no impact at all. Now, essential county services continue without interruption, but you too can do your part to help out. Sanitize your roll cart handles, Ensure all garbage is bagged. Do not flush fats, oils, and grease, nor those sanitizing wipes down the drain. And while hunkering down at home is becoming the new way of life for us all, the services and protection we all hold so dear prove the new way of life and the days of old are both rooted in the county's top priority, an unwavering commitment to service. I can't be more proud of the men and women of this department and their approach to what really is unprecedented in many ways. And the fact that they are still coming to work and they are still providing that service that is expected by the citizens of DeKalb County. This county depends on this government to provide critical, essential services. Uh, There will be no shutdown of those services, no matter what the case might be. What a beautiful look at the heart of this great county. Now, let's take a look at the health of the county in the wake of the coronavirus. For this health update, we're going straight to the expert, DeKalb's District Health Director, Dr. Sandra Elizabeth Ford. Thank you and good evening. DeKalb County continues to struggle with COVID-19 as we have since this pandemic started in March. Um, Historically, over the last month or so, we've been seeing an increase of about 250 new cases per week. That number has started to ramp up in the 300s now. Um, Particularly concerned um, uh, based on the celebrations over the past weekend and the lack of consistent mask wearing in those types of events that we will continue to see surges upward uh, with this virus. We are also entering into the colder months, although it's nice right now, we are starting to get colder and we will see increases related to that as well. We are continuing to encourage the same messaging we've been doing all along, which is wear a mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. These are the simplest measures available to prevent the spread of COVID-19. We are also encouraging people to be mindful of their environment as we enter into the Thanksgiving holiday. I know that everybody wants to be with their family and friends, but this is the one season that you're going to have to be extra mindful of who is in your environment. 
particularly as you have college students coming home from outside campuses who may be bringing virus as asymptomatic carriers. So please make sure those children and loved ones that you have that are coming from out of town or have been away from you have a COVID-19 test before they come into your home. Um, and make sure that if they have not had a test that they are appropriately isolated from the rest of the family members. Multi-generational gatherings such as Thanksgiving are one of the highest risks for spread of the virus right now. Our increases that we're seeing nationwide are tending to be in households. And so we are being particularly mindful of ensuring that folks are safe um, from passing this virus on to more vulnerable people. Here in DeKalb County, our top zip codes for COVID remain 30058, 30083, 34, 32, 38, 84, and 30329. Those are our top zip codes and uh, related to increases in COVID-19 uh, positive. We are seeing positive rates jumping up all over the county. Currently, we have three different COVID-19 test sites in DeKalb, uh, Stonecrest, uh, Brandsmart, and uh, Piney Grove Baptist Church. All three of those are seeing positivity rates much higher than we have been seeing over the last month or so. Right now, they're around 5 to 8 percent, where they were 1 to 3 percent a month ago. And so if this surge continues, I'm very concerned about what happens as we go into the winter months. As far as a vaccine is uh, concerned, it's in moving in the right direction. I don't know that it will be widely available in time for the holiday season. And so we need to continue with the same messaging that we've been providing all along until the vaccine is available. Even when the vaccine does become available, initially it will obviously be given to priority groups. And so folks who may want a vaccine may not initially be able to get a vaccine. And so we're probably looking at um, first responders, of course, healthcare providers, and our more vulnerable population, such as those who live in long-term care facilities, because currently they're one of our highest uh, populations for a negative outcome from COVID-19. Uh, however, we are seeing a tremendous increase in COVID cases among our youth. Right now, 61% of the cases in DeKalb County of COVID-19 are to individuals 44 or younger. Um, more than 30% of those are to 29 or less. And so this is probably the group that are the asymptomatic carriers. And so we must be very mindful, as I said, as we enter the holiday season with seniors and potentially asymptomatic carriers being in the same environment. This is a recipe for concern. So we're asking everyone, again, to be careful about who you're around. It's not just about you. It's the people around you who may be more vulnerable. And so as we walk into this holiday season, first Thanksgiving and next Christmas, um, again, this may be the time for very limited gatherings among family, if you gather at all. Um, and there's also virtual celebrations. We've been suggesting virtual Thanksgivings where people can show what they're cooking, but be socially distanced. Um, I also would be remiss uh, if I did not discuss influenza. Flu is the uh, other twindemic, as we call it, that is going to create a very complicated um, future for us, not only here in DeKalb, but nationwide. Uh, the symptoms of flu are so similar to the symptoms of COVID-19 that it is going to be a challenge for us to know which is which. That fever, body aches, uh, and cough happen in both of those uh, symptoms, situations. And so um, we need to be careful about what we diagnose. And, and uh, the isolation and quarantine still remains the same. You shouldn't be exposed to anyone for either of those um, issues. And so we are encouraging flu vaccine because while our COVID vaccine is not yet available, our flu vaccine certainly is. And so that's one of the simplest ways to protect yourself from something uh, that we see every year. Uh, and we see losses every year from, from flu. We also, in light of everything going on with COVID, we wanna save our hospital beds for our COVID-19 patients. And so to have more people immunized with flu vaccine 
means that there will be lower hospitalizations from the flu. And so we can save those beds for the people who need them the most. So to close out, my final message is a reminder to, again, wash your hands, watch your distance, and wear your mask. If you're wearing your mask and the individuals you are around are also wearing a mask, it cuts down you and your ability to contract COVID-19 by close to 80%. And so that's almost better than the vaccine, which the current vaccine that is being researched is 90% effective. And so here's something that we can do every day while we wait for the vaccine to be widely available. And so that's a simple way to keep everyone safe. Be mindful of your environments, wishing everybody a great holiday season, but please be safe, be careful. And remember, it's not just about you, it's about the people around you who may not have the immune system that you have. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank DeKalb County government, who has been extraordinary in their support of the Board of Health's mission um, around the COVID response. And last but certainly not least, my amazing staff who have worked tirelessly since March to provide not only support in the COVID response, but also our basic health services that we've been trying to maintain despite the pandemic. And so, they have been un unrecognized heroes. And so I want to take this opportunity to publicly provide words of gratitude, um, which could never be enough to uh, show my appreciation for all of their hard work. So thank you to DeKalb County government and thank you to DeKalb County Board of Health staff. By wearing masks, frequent hand washing, and social distancing, there's no question we're all keenly aware now of ways to protect our physical health. But true wellness includes focusing on our mental health, too. Please call the Georgia COVID-19 Emotional Support Line if you or someone you know is suffering from feelings of isolation, anxiety, or despair. In fact, there are many resources and places for help available to DeKalb residents. Our next speaker represents one of those resources. Here now is DeKalb Community Service Board's Dr. Sofia Martinez. A pandemic is a natural disaster. For the past 11 months, we have all been experiencing COVID-19 in our lives. Um, we have also been experiencing all the trauma that it has collectively caused all of us. Um, we have all lost something or someone in this process, family, friends, jobs, finances, how we used to live, and even how we get and receive support. According to the CDC, just this past June, 40% of Americans reported struggling with their mental health or substance abuse as a result of this pandemic. And we have seen rates of depression, anxiety, trauma-related disorders, and addiction dramatically increase in our country. I am Dr. Carmen Martinez, a psychiatrist and medical director for the DeKalb Community Service Board. Um, and I want to let you all know that you are not alone. We may all have very different feelings about what is happening to our nation and to our world. Uh, we may experience it in different ways. Um, it may be physical symptoms of stress, our hearts may be beating faster. Uh, we may be struggling with mild symptoms of depression, um, difficulty getting motivated, having energy, getting out of bed every day, feeling lonely and isolated from our loved ones um, and how we used to live our lives. But I wanna let you all know that as a community, we are not alone um, and that the DeKalb Community Service Board is here to help. Um, we are a public community-based organization offering mental health, addiction, and developmental disability services
to those who are uninsured and underinsured. So if you have happened to be affected by unemployment during this time and don't have any financial means, just know that no matter the circumstances, we are here to help. Um, and just a phone call away. If you or a family member, friend or coworker are struggling, um, please call us at 404-892-4646 and one of our experienced clinicians will be able to assist you and get you the help you need. Remember that no matter what, your individual circumstances at this moment, there's always hope and that we're all in this together. And together we will overcome this challenging time much greater and much stronger than we ever were before. Again, no one has to suffer in silence. Please take note of the resources that you see on your screen throughout our program for where you or your loved ones can turn for help. Now, earlier in our program, you saw that wonderful video showing just how strong DeKalb County is and how essential workers continue to serve the people of this county even during the scariest days early on in this pandemic. Here now is one such essential worker, one of DeKalb's finest, Captain Nicole Rutland. She'll be followed by our first few inspirational speakers, Pastor Carl Moore of Clarkston First Baptist Church, Pastor Vandy Simmons of Antioch African Methodist Episcopal Church, spoken word artist Pamela Poole-Starks, and the lead chaplain of the DeKalb County Sheriff's Office, Curtis Crocker. But first, DKPD's own Captain Rutland. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark that had me blind it's gonna be a bright bright sunshiny day it's gonna be a bright bright sunshiny day i think i can make it now the pain is gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared. Here is that rainbow I've been praying for. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Look all around, there's nothing but blue sky. straight ahead there's nothing but blue skies oh, I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Oh, it's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Such a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Yeah, yeah. Mm.
good evening. I'm so glad to be with you all on this evening as we celebrate healing and inspiration. First of all, we want to thank our Commissioner Steve Bradshaw for bringing us all together. Uh, this evening, I just want to give you a few words of inspiration to share with all of us that in this environment that we are in, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Paul reminded us over in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 7, uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And so I come to you that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, you got to remember oftentimes that fear is a natural uh, physical and emotional response that we have to things that are uncertain. And brother and sister, I'm sure that many of us are living in a time uh, where we're living in an era of uncertain, but the good news is that our Lord and our Savior is still maintaining us in the midst of this. See, although we have the potential for fear to grasp us and where fear shows up, it has a tendency to bring about woundedness, which need to be healed. We are in the midst of a pandemic. We're in the midst of racial divide. We are in um, uh, the midst of a political divide. But the good news is I believe that the Lord has the power to heal and bring us back together again if we submit ourselves unto him. We must first remember what the Lord said he has not given, meaning that this did not come from the Lord, but it was created by man in order to bring about a systemic divide Whereas we need to turn that around by realizing who we are and whose we are, and really that uh, realizing that we have the power to turn our situation around. So no matter what relationship that you're in, no matter what you're going through, I encourage you this evening to lay that aside and remember whose you are and the power that God has given us and the confidence that we have in him that he can bring about a change in your situation. And so brothers and sisters, no matter what you're facing, I encourage you this evening to allow healing and restoration to come into your life, but not only your life, but the others that you are associated with. And here in our great county of the cat, we are believing that the Lord is gonna turn it around in our favor to bring about healing, not only on the south side, but the north side, the east side and the west side, well, we will all work together for the betterment of our county, and we can do this by remembering what Paul said, for God has not given, it did not come from the Lord, the spirit of fear, but he has given us what power and of love and of a sound mind, meaning that he will give us a peace that surpass all understanding and will heal and restore us, and that's our inspiration for this evening. Today. Um, I want to personally thank um, the commissioner, uh, Steve Bradshaw, and all the DeKalb County commissioners, as well as uh, CEO Michael Thurman. And we certainly thank you, uh, Ms. Lewis and Crystal, for all that you are doing. I want to share with you um, today, I am honored, first of all, to be here, but I want to share from the passage, um, John, the ninth chapter, uh, the first through the 12th verse. And it reads, as we went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him beg and asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he's only like him. 
But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Salome and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. Just want to share just quickly uh, with the time I've been afforded uh, from, from this John the ninth verse through the 12th verse, but actually it's the entire chapter of John 9. I want to highlight that third verse where it says, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. I want to talk about uh, a God opportunity. Uh, I'm sure this is a familiar passage for many uh, in the Bible about this blind man being healed and the questioning behind his healing. And, and people wanted to know uh, who sinned, who thought it was that he sinned. And I think it's important what Jesus, how Jesus responds to that and says, uh, this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. And so, so I think that's a challenge for all of us and all of our works, wherever we are, that we, we need to be more concerned about doing the work of God and taking advantage of the God opportunities so God might be glorified and are displayed in our midst. There's three things that I just really want to highlight about taking advantage of a God opportunity that I think this, this text afford us. One is, is right here, that we must work with a sense of urgency. You see it right there in the fourth verse. As long as, as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. And, and, and so that, I think that's a challenge for all of us uh, to, in taking advantage of our God opportunity is, is to work with this sense of urgency. Um, the, the songwriter uh, in a Hold On to God's Unchanging Hand said, time is filled with swift transitions. And I even like what the great late uh, Dr. Benjamin E. Mays uh, says about that minute. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it, forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. I think that really highlight for us the urgency uh, of now and and for us to to work with this sense of urgency but the other piece that i think that in taking advantage of our god opportunity is is the second piece here is that we must work with an open mind uh, you see how jesus healed healed this uh, man with the saliva and and the mud and, and I think that the larger question is, is that we shouldn't ask how, but uh, just allow God to, to use us. We, we don't need to worry so much about how God may use us, but just be willing to be used by God. So, so we need to keep and work with an open mind. And then finally, I think it's very important as we take advantage of our God opportunities, we need to work with a focused faith. Yes, a focused faith. I think about it, if you continue to read the rest of this chapter, and, and, and it's the entire chapter of nine of, of John, you, you will see and where well, you will hear a lot of noise 
people who are questioning um, how this happened, when it happened, who did it. And it's just a whole lot of noise that, that, that that's a, uh, associated with this, this healing and, and Jesus taking advantage of his God opportunity. So, so as we take advantage of our God opportunity, we must uh, have this focused faith that we do not be distracted. We are not distracted by the noise that may be around us. Now, I wanna, wanna share this with you as I get ready to close uh, about, how, about noise, how distracting noise can be. For the most part, noise, the noise around us really can't hurt us. But if we're not careful, we'll, we'll give the noise too much attention and it will distract from the work of God. I'm, I'm from South Georgia and, and, uh, and, and anyone from South Georgia or visited South Georgia know in the summertime, there's a whole lot of gnats. Yeah, these little small, little aggravating gnats. And gnats can become very distracting. But, but one of the things I learned about gnats as I grew up in South Georgia is that gnats really can't do you any harm. And, and even as I've grown up to be an older gentleman, I've discovered that a lot of the, lot of the distracting noise of people around us, they really can't do you any harm. But we must be willing to take advantage of our God opportunity and, and have this focused faith that we do not get distracted by the noise of the gnat people around us. Because for the most part, they really can't hurt us. So my challenge again to all of us, as we continue our, our healing, that we would take full advantage of our God opportunity. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you again for, yes, this opportunity that has been afforded us. Help us all, oh God, in all the work that we do for the greater good to take full advantage of our God opportunity. Help us, oh God, to work with this sense of urgency to work with an open mind, and yes, to work with focused faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello, 2020, that's an interesting time. And as a speaker, a, a poet, a storyteller, it really has caught me on a point too where I really wanna share what's on my heart. My name is Pamela Diana Poole Starks, and I'm a Decadeite. As they say on the international news, a decalbite. <laughs> they got it straight. But the thing about it is, we're always talking about getting back to normal. And what I found out is, after I got quiet and stayed still for like six months, part of it, I really don't want to get back to normal. A lot of the normal that we were in wasn't necessarily a place where we were really happy with it. It just had become the normal. So we should look at doing something more or different. Just say, for instance, I got to the point where I started to, to buy more than four of the same kind of fruit. And then I started to change my salad dressing. Whenever I went to get a salad, I would always say, I like this kind of dressing, do you have that? And I would never venture out to get a different dressing, like something was gonna happen. But that became normal. And most times the normal that we don't wanna change from it's just because we're not used to it. And at some point we decide that it's a problem or that it's scary, but it's really not. Try this if you have it and if not, it's just support. I started to look out a different window. Every morning I would get up and look out a different window. And do you know what? I saw a different view. I saw some shrubbery or weeds or whatever it was that I liked that I didn't even know was there. And another time I looked out the back and I saw something that I didn't know was there. And I even appreciated it. So look, 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 out, look out a different view. 
Even if you don't have but one window, look out at it from a different point of view. Walk outside and turn to the right, turn to the left, turn backwards and look up in the sky. And you're gonna see something even in your own personal visuals that you didn't know was there or that maybe you really wanted to know. And I have started to say, be a leaf grow walker, watcher. If there's a branch in your yard and you can't go anywhere, start watching that one leaf and watch it as it develops. Or watch it as it leaves. Or watch it as it leaves and fall on the ground. Or watch the leaves change colors. And we will find that we don't have to go anywhere to be entertained. We don't have to panic because we can't get out and be, go to entertainment and say so we're confined and make the mass political not to go there. But we can really be enjoying all kinds of things that are changing and change is gonna happen with without us. But to, for inspiration and healing, let's make our own change without having to go and be separated at a table with six people or to go to dinner for our birthday or we felt that didn't anybody love us if we didn't go. Try to watch the leaf change. Try to watch the colors change. Try to watch whatever finds you from the normal, from the back to normal that makes you feel that life is progressing and you're moving forward. Don't go back and keep moving. And on that note, I wrote a piece called Self-Portrait. Michael Jackson said, I'm looking at that man in the mirror and I'm asking him to change his ways. But if you're butting your head against a brick wall and always saying the world is so mean and wondering why you're just not feeling any love and you just can't seem to make the scene, you can see that it ain't happening. And you can really see that it ain't. If you don't like the picture you see, then why don't you just change the paint? I mean, get some different brushes and try some different strokes. Get around some different people and mingle with some different folk, different size people, different colored people, different colors of people. You can really see that it's not happening. And you can see that it ain't. If you don't like the picture that you see in your self-portrait, then why don't you just change the paint? And that's the inspirational message that I gave myself, because sometimes we have to inspire ourselves. We really do. For 2020, don't panic about not going back to normal. Look forward to moving forward into something you haven't seen, done, or tasted before. That works for me. Thank you. Welcome DeKalb County community. My name is Pastor Curtis Crocker, the lead chaplain for DeKalb County Sheriff's Office, where we just elected our new uh, first African-American uh, sheriff, female sh sheriff here in the county. I want to say thank you to Commissioner Bradshaw for allowing me to be a part of the evening of healing and inspiration. I believe that we are in a season of healing as we have witnessed the pandemic, which leads me to a place where God has kept me for quite some time in which we have been teaching at the church where I pastor. Uh, in Isaiah 26 and 20, it says, come my people and shut thy doors about uh, thyselves and hide thyself and uh, if you were just for a little while, a little moment until the indignation be overpassed, until God's wrath has been completed, until he cleans up the place. I'm in a place now that, uh, okay, God, we you have us in a place of, of understanding and growth, and it is my prayer that we are growing. But what's going to happen after this, after we've come out of the struggle, after we have lost a job or lost a loved one? So is my prayer, uh, community, that we lean not to our own understanding, but trust God in everything because God has something far greater than what you are experiencing now. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 10, it says, but the God of all grace who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that we have suffered a while, make us perfect, established, strengthened, and settles us. Even in this pandemic, after this, God is gonna give us something far greater than what we can ever imagine but we got to uh, be encouraging. So if I can encourage the faith-based community to encourage God's people and to understand that then after this, there will be healing. And after this, there shall, it should be joy and love 
and togetherness. So keep your eyes on the prize. Stay obedient. Continue to praise and worship our God. Because after this, all things work together for the good for those of us who love him. To God be the glory. And thank you once again for this moment. Wow. Let's keep the positive energy and uplifting messages going this evening. Uh, boy, we are being inspired by every single word we hear. Uh, with Reverend Dr. Todd Speed of Decatur Presbyterian Church, Pastor Troy Bush from Rehoboth Baptist Church, Pastor Dexter Rowland of New Piney Grove Missionary Baptist Church, and Pastor Oria Parker from St. Paul AME Church. But first, it's been said love is the message conveyed every time he performs. So let's all sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of saxophonist Reginald Harris.
Good evening, friends and neighbors. My name is Todd Speed. I'm the pastor of Decatur Presbyterian Church right in downtown Decatur. It's good to be with you this evening. These last eight months have been historic for our nation, an emotional roller coaster for many. This past week, at least half of our nation was thrilled with election results and the other half of our nation not so pleased and unsettled. And so we have much work to do in, in listening to one another and in learning how we can work together and go forward together as a people, as a nation. My prayer is that tonight's event will bring us all a bit of hope and encouragement and a renewed sense that we have important work to do together. The reading I've chosen for tonight comes from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Paul loved this first century congregation dearly, and he wrote at least in part to address a potential crisis. Dissension was brewing between two women who were mentioned by name, Euodia and Syntyche. And Paul's words were meant to ward off potential conflict and to provide an opportunity for them to reconcile with one another. Paul urges the two women to be of the same mind in the Lord. He didn't say to them they had to agree with one another. He said, be of the same mind in the Lord. And he urged his companions in the church to, to help these two members of the community find reconciliation. Over the past months, you may have had some lack of unity, some potential disagreement or conflict with a friend, with a family member, with a neighbor. So hear the word of the Lord from Philippians, ancient words in the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near at hand. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. One thing that's been confirmed over the past weeks is that many of us have been living in a bubble. I live in the Decatur bubble. Many of us have lived and consumed news media and different echo chambers throughout the country, hearing and listening only to those who think and vote like we do. This has led to significant dissension in our nature, in our nation, and we've really not understood each other very well at all. So the question going forward is, can we disagree without being so disagreeable? Can we begin to focus on what unites us rather than what divides us? Can we work together across divisions for the sake of the common good? I believe our culture is tired of the division and the hate. And so, and yet we're so caught up in its grip. It will only be released from its grip if there's a clear alternative. The clear alternative to me is hope and peace and love. These are the only things that will overcome despair and chaos and hate. Friends, in these coming months, we dare not gloat over an election victory, nor double down on what divides us if we've been defeated. Instead, we must all bear seeds of hope. We must all speak words of peace to one another. We must all commit to actions of neighborly love. If we can learn to love all God's children on both sides of the aisle, in all parts of our county, in all parts of the country, ultimately, that love will overcome division. Martin Luther King Jr. once wrote, men often hate each other because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they cannot communicate. And they cannot communicate because they are separated from one another. What if DeKalb County and the Atlanta metro area was not a place where people were separated from one another in their like-minded groups? more like a body woven together in which different parts come together 
with ears ready to listen with minds, ready to understand with hearts, ready to love those different from ourselves. Paul ends that particular text from Philippians with this encouragement. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Dwell on these things. Keep on doing the things you've learned and received and heard in me, says Paul, and the God of peace will be with you. It's a beautiful promise. If we can engage in these age-old practices of, of rejoicing always in every circumstance, of praying always with thankful hearts, of focusing on what is true and honorable and just and pure, the promise is we will know peace. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Friends, May all of us come to know that peace in the days and months to come. The peace that passes understanding. Good night all. Thank you. My name is Troy Bush. I am the lead pastor of Rehoboth Baptist Church here in DeKalb County. And it really is my honor and privilege to be with you. I thank Commissioner Bradshaw for the invitation and really for our entire Board of Commissioners, for CEO Thurman, and for our entire DeKalb staff and all that they do in serving our community. Not only is our church in DeKalb County and has been since its beginning in the mid 1800s, but I personally live in DeKalb County. My wife and I are proud that this is our home county and uh, that we are residents here. These days have been incredibly challenging for all of us. Like you, COVID-19 and the many other challenges we have faced have hit home, hit very close. Um, one of my adult sons has had COVID-19. We've had church family who have had COVID-19, and we have had church family who have succumbed to COVID-19. And so we understand personally the presses and the strains that this has brought on all of us. And I want to take just a moment and share with my friends and neighbors and family uh, our DeKalb citizens, just a word of hope that I would share as the pastor of one of the, the great churches and communities of faith in this county. We've talked a lot in recent days in our church family about the hope we have, not because of our circumstances or who may be in authority or who may be leaving authority, but rather in who our God is. I want to draw our minds for just a moment to the book of Daniel to a prayer that he prayed. And I wanna share just the first couple of verses of that and then give some thoughts and then close with a prayer that I hope will be an encouragement to you. In Daniel chapter two, Daniel has come to before the Lord and he is pleading for wisdom that he would understand and have guidance for the days ahead of him and the things with which he faces. And he ultimately prays this prayer to God. I'm only going to share the first couple of verses. Daniel answered and said, this is his prayer to God. Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. And he gives wisdom to the wise. Those are such appropriate words for this day. For you and I to remember some important things that I think will help all of us. They certainly help me. When Daniel prayed this prayer, it is an expression of what the Lord has done in his life after he has gathered with three of his closest friends as they have sought direction from God. And the first thing I would remind all of us is that in these times, one of the greatest gift God's gives, one of the greatest gifts that God gives us are our friends, our neighbors. I can't imagine life with those friends who walk alongside me in these days. Just yesterday, I got a call from a friend that I've not talked to in some weeks. She's a good bit older than I am, but she is a dear, precious friend. She called simply to encourage me. Folks, I wanna remind you, God has given you friends and you are a friend to someone. Be that encouraging friend today. Be that gift of God in someone else's life and know that he will bless you likewise with your friends. A second thing that he shows us here is that there are seasons in this prayer, Daniel acknowledges before God 
that there are seasons and times we are all uh, weary a bit of all that COVID-19 has changed in our lives and the election cycle and we are ready for this season to end. Think of it like summer and fall. Some of you love summer. Some of you love fall. <clears throat> some of you love winter. Very few people love all of the seasons. These, this season and the seasons we stand in, they're going to come to a pass. We know that COVID-19 is not going to be with us forever, and we rejoice in that. That day could not come soon enough for all of us. But friends, I encourage you, hold on, persevere, continue to press ahead, live life vibrantly, knowing that this is just a season and it is going to come to an end for our God controls these seasons. The third thing I would share with you is in this day, turn to the God who has created all of us. He desires to do good in our lives. And I promise you, if you will turn and seek his joy, his hope, his blessings, that he will answer you. He will draw you to him yourself. He will draw you to himself, and he will be the God that you so desire that he would be if you will turn and follow him. I want to share with you something as I close. It really is an old prayer. One of the things that I am encouraged by is not simply uh, hearing what those around me would say, but I like to turn and see what others who have followed God for many, many years, even before me, and see how they have exemplified hope and courage in days not exactly the same, but certainly with great challenges. This is a prayer that was written and prayed by followers of Jesus many years ago, in fact, centuries ago. I want to read part of it with you as a prayer that you and I might join in together. It brings me hope and encouragement. I hope it will do the same for you. The world is before me this day, and I am weak and fearful, but I look to you for strength. If I venture forth alone, I stumble and I fall, but on the beloved's arms I am firm as the eternal hills. If I let treachery, the treachery of my heart, if I am left to the treachery of my heart, I shall shame your name, but if enlightened, guided, upheld by your spirit, I shall bring you glory. Be my arm of support, my strength to stand, my light to see, my feet to run, my shield to protect, my sword to repel, and my son to warm. Friends and neighbors, hang on. Turn to the God who gives us hope and know that he will walk with you in these days. What have you been thinking about lately? I know these are some very difficult times. And um, what, what has been consuming your thought life? The Bible says, as a man thinketh or as a woman thinketh, so is he, so is she. The thoughts that we meditate upon in our hearts and in our minds have a strong impact on who we are. Uh, the ideas and information that we ruminate on uh, shapes who we are. Perhaps that's why the Bible tells us that we must guard our hearts. We must be very careful about the thoughts that enter into our hearts. We must diligently watch what we allow to occupy our minds. Our thoughts really run our lives. Our thoughts control our life. Our thoughts determine the course of our life. Uh, if we meditate on negative things, we can become a negative person. If we focus on depressing, depressing issues, we can become a depressed person. If we focus on what is wrong all the time, we can become a very cynical person. The Bible tells us to fix our thoughts on things that are true, things that are honorable, things that are right, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are admirable. We ought to think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. During these very difficult times, it's so important that we focus on the positive and not the negative, that we focus on unity 
and not division, that we focus on hope and not despair, the solution and not the problem. God is our hope. He is our solution. And with him, we can make it. We must keep our minds stayed on him, for he is our hope. He is the one who will see us through these difficult times. God bless you. Keep your minds on the Lord. I once read that in a dark time, the eye begins to see. We are in or coming through a dark time in both our personal and corporate life. And we need the eye to begin to see. The amazing thing about life is that when you come to a dark time and look at things through the lens of faith, the dark truths in that ugliness become open to the eye in the light of God. All things become open to the light of God. In a dark time, the eye begins to see. This quote reminds me of a spiritual truth. When we are burdened by one crisis after another, when we are stressed by all the commitments we have made and responsibilities we hold, we need to remember that we are not alone in a dark time. The eye begins to see the light and strength of God. The light of God and the strength of God are often the means to a spiritual path that leads to healing, blessings, and transformation. It is the spiritual path to the dark times of loss, suffering, pain, pandemics, disparities, injustices, political divisions, economic downturns that we must remember that oftentimes tragedy, brokenness, and pain are the things that brings healing and wholeness. In a dark time, the darkness reveal our way to the divine. God works unseen and invisibly in the dark. God works through the pain, reminding us of our utter dependence upon him and his power and his strength. It is often a spiritual path that we neither choose nor want to travel upon. It is also a journey we can find ourselves embarking upon whether, or not, whether we like it or not. Our choice is whether we can embrace the journey so that the eye can begin to see the possibilities as a way to God and a path to healing rather than denying, rejecting, or judging the path ourselves. The path calls us to empty ourselves of our ideas of what should be and to let go of pride, egotism, competition, and let go of all we know and open ourselves to the light and strength of our creator. When we let them in, uh, we let go of all we know and we expect. And we receive the wisdom and power from God to reach out with new vision and possibilities and the promise of healing that transcends the limits of science and human understanding and embrace the divine energy of the presence and strength of God that causes our eyes to see and make us whole. This also creates and foster a new and a better community. Thanks be to God for the light and strength that shows us the way and whose presence make known to us that there can be no light and strength for healing, no unity, no true justice, where there is no love of neighbor. Our final inspirational speakers for the evening will be Pastor Dr. Jerome King from Mount Moriah Church. Dr. Phil Schroeder from Dunwoody United Methodist, Pastor Robert Carr from Indian Creek Baptist Church, and AIC Incorporated's Imam Sheikh Salahuddin Wazir. We're going to take a moment to reflect on one of the most inspired and purpose-filled lives of our time, that of the late Congressman John Lewis. But first, here to lead us into that next series of inspirational messages of healing and hope, we welcome back Reginald Harris and DKPD Captain Nicole Rutland. Speak 
to my heart, Holy Spirit, give me the words that will bring new life, words on the wings of a morning, the dark night will fade away if you speak to my heart now. Speak to my heart, Holy Spirit, message of love to encourage me, lifting my heart from despair, how you love me and care for me. You speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to my heart. can hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Oh, give me your holy word. If I can hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone, oh, I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide to my heart, Lord. Oh, give me your holy word. If I can hear from you, then I know what to do. Let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to me, my heart. Talk to me, 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 talk to me. Speak to me. I'm listening, Lord. Talk to me. Good evening, DeKalb County. As we come towards the close of a tumultuous year filled with partisan politics, protests, a pandemic, polarization, I want to share with you a word of inspiration as we prepare to go into a new year and a new beginning. The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 shares as he was going through a period of pain, he asked God three times that God would remove the thorn in his flesh. God's only reply to him is, my grace is sufficient. When you are weak, then are you made strong. Paul's words encourage us in two areas. He talks about the idea of the overwhelming pain that we experience. Most of us can relate to that. 
But amidst the overwhelming pain that we experience, he talks about God's overruling purpose, that God's purpose includes our pain, and God uses the pain to help us to fulfill his purpose. It's like the process that takes place whenever an oyster gets a grain of sand in its bed. It begins to try to relieve itself from this irritant by coating over it. It repeats the process over and over again. And when it finishes, he ends up with something of great value. It becomes a pearl. A pearl is the byproduct of an irritated oyster. Many of us have been irritated by the things that we've experienced. And God says, I'm taking these experiences to make you more valuable than what you've ever been. As we prepare to go into the next year, God is going to lead us there with a new sense of value, purpose, so that we can show forth his glory. Be encouraged. That is my prayer. I'm Phil Schrader, the new pastor of the Dunwoody United Methodist Church. One of the members of our church died on Sunday night, and she was a physical therapist. In tribute to her, I want us to remember the gift that physical therapists give us. Physical therapists hurt us to make us stronger. They make us stretch, and when they make us stretch, they help make us stronger by stretching us beyond where we have been before. During these difficult times in our country with COVID-19 and the divides that we have politically, we need to be people who stretch more, who stretch across the divide, reaching out to grab hands across the aisle so that we might strengthen our county, strengthen our community, and strengthen our nation. The truth is this, the older we get, the more we need to stretch and the less we do. May we stretch to become stronger as a community. Bless you. This is an honor for me to be with you all today. I'm Pastor Rob Carr of Indian Creek Baptist Church, where our motto is, we are a caring church impacting people with the love and gospel of Jesus Christ. This is a very special time, and I'm so glad you're a part of this because we are here to help instill, instill a healing process that we're having. We're all being affected by this uh, COVID virus and how it's impacting all of us. And so for you being here today is very important for all of us to support each other and to also look at different perspectives to help us learn how we can get through this and learn a healing process. What I want to do uh, with you at this time is to give you three perspectives that might give you some something to think about as we look at this. We know the virus is just impacting, as I said, so many of us, my family's been impacted by it, my church members have been impacted by it. So here are the things that I have presented for us to consider as, as we look at this together. This virus has come into play as with all kinds of disasters like this. Uh, what it actually does is the first thing it more than likely does is it breaks the routine of everything. I'm used to going to the store a certain way. I'm used to going to church a certain way. I'm used to being with my family, my grandchildren in a certain way. Thanksgiving is coming. We normally have routine family traditions. That's all been disrupted. And we know that. And because it's been disrupted, it's causing a great deal of pain and difficulty. Even worse than that, there are people now who are finding themselves or finding their families in the hospital where they're having to be totally separated from them and they can't be with them. So this routine that we normally have has totally disrupted our lives. And now we're trying to cope with it. We're trying to understand it to the best of our ability. And because of that, it adds more stress and suffering to our lives. The next thing is, and I think this is more of a more positive vein, but it's still stressful. And that is, this pandemic is causing us to reprioritize things. Not only do we have a disruption of our routine, but the reprioritizing is, I must think of people first. That's what's important here. Yes, do I have trouble wearing masks? I do. I wear glasses, they fog up. I don't like breathing my own carbon dioxide, but for the sake of others, I am willing to wear the mask. For the sake of others, I'm giving social distancing. For even for the sake of myself, I want to do this. I must learn to pre prioritize and to have more understanding because as we know, and we've heard this say by so many important people, 
this virus knows no bounds. It doesn't have an educational limit. It doesn't have racial limits. It's everyone can be affected by this and it's to be taken seriously. But so we must look at this as a way of saying, how do I re, uh, reprioritize my thoughts and my thinking and to help me be more understanding and more caring. This leads me into my third point because it causes me to move forward in a caring way. And this is what I wanna leave you with because as pastor, you know I'm gonna give you some scripture to consider, but listen to this as it affects all of us in this pandemic and while we're suffering, trying to find healing and closure to some of this. And as we're patiently waiting for that vaccine that will eventually be here, but it may take time. And for those of us who have suffered loss or suffering because we have family members in the hospital, I hope this will help you to consider your process. And, and by the way, I would say, sometimes people say, I don't have any tools to, to, to deal with this pandemic. How do I help someone? How do I do this outside of the masks and the social distancing? This is very important here. Listen to this. It's found in 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. It says, if I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but I do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a changing, a, a clanging cymbal. In other words, if I'm the best speaker in the world, it's, it, it doesn't uh, do me any good if I don't have love. If I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries, if I'm the smartest person in the room and I have all the knowledge and I could even move mountains because of my faith, but I don't have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor, I'm the biggest and the best entrepreneur and I surrender my body to the flames, but I don't have love, I gain absolutely nothing. Why? Because love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues and people who speak in tongues, they will be still. Where there's knowledge, they will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, and we understand in part, but when perfection comes, when completion comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I thought and acted like a child. I was more self-centered, but when I became a man or an adult, I put away self-centeredness, childish ways behind me. Now we see as a poor reflection, as in a mirror. We can't see everything. It's dark. It's cloudy. But one day we will see face to face. We will have full understanding. And now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now the three things remain for us during this pandemic, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. May God bless you. May he continue to use you as you reach out to others during this time. Good evening, fellow uh, DeKalb County resident and the leadership. I thank sincerely uh, the leadership of Commissioner Bradshaw and the CEO Mike Thurman. We as a citizen and we as a people this year went through a lot of challenges, starting from COVID and now uh, post-election and the division. We as a fellow citizen, we need to uh, recognize our difference and embrace our difference and build on it. And always, always we need to have prayer in our life. Life without prayer is a body without a soul. So the door of Almighty God is open 724 in the morning, in the evening, anytime. When we reach all dead in with any difficulties, we turn to Almighty God to heal our differences, to reunite our soul and our uh, bodies so that we can fight our common enemy that are going to face our life in the days and the month and the years coming. We as a people together, we are strong, divided, we are weak. And I pray to Almighty God that created all of us to unify our heart, our soul, give the wisdom to our leadership to unite us, not to divide us, the citizen to accept the will of the people, the citizen to work in differences and embrace our differences, pray for better tomorrow. I pray for better future. Dikab Kani is demonstrated 
it is diversity. We pray to Almighty God to continue his blessing of our diversity and live in peace and harmony with all citizens in the Cap County and beyond. And I pray to Almighty God for the whole country to heal for United States of America, not divided state of America. And I pray to Almighty God day and night to see that day always be exhibited in our life, in our circumstances, in spite of all challenges we face. We will, by the will of God and the will of our common mind set people, we will come any challenges that are going to face. And we say in Arabic, inshallah, and I end in Arabic, the verse of the Quran says, inna ma'al usri yusra, which means with difficulty, ease will come. After difficulty, ease will come. And we pray to Almighty God to remove all the calamities and difficulties in our cities, in our county, and in our country. And I pray by saying, Amen. This evening, we've heard words of inspiration, anecdotes of encouragement, and messages that we can and will persevere. Do you feel better? I know I do. If there's ever been an example of perseverance, it's certainly been the life of Congressman, civil rights legend, and true public servant, the late John Lewis. He served Georgia's 5th Congressional District for more than three decades and lived his entire life serving others while encouraging us all to get into good trouble. Congressman Lewis was a walking example of inspiration and of what a life well lived truly looks like. Here now with a special video presentation, John Lewis in his own words. I grew up on a farm in rural Alabama, about 50 miles from Montgomery. And growing up there during the 40s, I saw those signs that said white men, colored men, white women, colored women, white waiting, colored waiting. I didn't like those signs, and I wanted to do something about it. In 1955, when I was 15 years old, I heard about Rosa Parks. I heard the words of Martin Luther King Jr. on old radio. And the action of Rosa Parks and the words of Martin Luther King Jr. inspired me. So I wrote this letter to Dr. King. I didn't tell my mother, I didn't tell my father, my sisters, my brothers, my teachers. Dr. King wrote me back and sent me a round trip Greyhound bus ticket and invited me to come to Montgomery to meet with him. In 1961, as a participant in the sit-ins of 1959 and 1960, I received a invitation from CORE to Congress of Racial Equality to participate in the Freedom Rides in 1961. In 1961, the same year that President Barack Obama was born, black people and white people can be seated on a bus. We got off the bus and we started into a so-called white waiting room. We were beaten by members of the Klan. They beat us. They left us lying in a pool of blood. The local police officials came up, wanted to know whether we wanted to press charges. We said, no, we come with peace. We believe in the way of love. We believe in the philosophy and the discipline of nonviolence. The Freedom Rides led to the desegregation of public transportation all across the South. In 1965, a group of young people, students, and others attempted to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama, to march 50 miles from Selma to Montgomery, to dramatize to the nation and to the world that people wanted simply to register to vote. And they came toward us, beating us with knife sticks and bull whips, tramping us with horses and releasing the tear gas. At the foot of that bridge, I was beaten. I thought I was going to die. I thought I saw death. But if dying was necessary to make it possible for hundreds and thousands and millions of people to be able to participate in a democratic process, that was a price to pay. My simple message would be, if you find something that you feel very strong about, stand up. Speak up, speak out, give it your all. Push, pull, and as I said from time to time, never ever give up. 
a give in, a give out. And whatever you do, do it with faith and hope and much love. Now that is a life well lived. And that is how you end a program. What a beautiful and inspiring program. Words needed for a time like this. You know, it's been my honor to serve as your mistress of ceremony for this much needed evening of healing and inspiration. Thank you, Commissioner Bradshaw. Remember, no one has to suffer alone. DeKalb County is truly in this together. Now grab your notepad and pen. We're gonna end our program listing all of the resources that we shared throughout the evening. But first, we're all in for a treat. Here now is gospel singer and YouTube sensation, Katie French, to close out the program with our final moment of inspiration brought to you through music. Have a good evening. Our daily bread, you said you would supply. Give us this day.